I'm now going to demonstrate the next exercise uh, in our series. This is the Transforce appliance. The instruments that we're going to be uh, needing to um, perform this exercise are a long nose bird beak and wine guard plier, uh, a flat tip math owl, a hollow chop, a three prong plier, a <clears throat> pin and ligature cutter, a uh, bowley gauge, a band pusher and scaler, uh, some 012 long cat whisker uh, steel ligature ties, some um, glide ties, um, a, some light quarter inch elastics, a type of knot, and because this uh, can be used at any point in phase one or phase two straight wire series, uh, I've just left the uh, arch wires on this type of dot from a previous exercise. Finally, this is the transverse transforce appliance and we'll talk about it in detail in a moment. All right, I just want to show you this uh, sheet. It'll be uh, in the uh, manual, but it's it's referencing the fact that the trans this transforce appliance, there's only four of them. There's four sizes. They all uh, I think the most important thing is their fully compressed size. Uh, they give it to you the the uh, transverse width of the appliance in the anterior uh, part of the appliance, which is usually where we're going because we're usually trying to use this thing to expand for incisors, try to get the lower incisors in in phase one. The, this is 18 millimeters fully compressed, 20, 22, and 24. Then the length the smallest distance this way in a sagittal from the molar the it's the lingual sheath from the lingual sheath mesial to the actual piston of the appliance is 17 millimeters 18 18 and 20. so we've got two two distances that we are two measurements that we need to look at we need to take a bully gauge and make a measurement from like the mesial of the molar with the appliance in we might look at it um, on a model you might look at it on a wax uh, bite if you can get a bully gauge in somebody's mouth you can measure it that way or you can just try you know this one is coming in at like 18 or so millimeters from the anterior of that lingual sheath to the approximate area where I think this uh, appliance is going to reach. Um, the, we've already been issued the second uh, to the smallest size which is this. Now let's talk about this appliance for a moment. The, the most impressive part of this appliance is the fact that it's just got a piston right here. So when you compress it it's generating a force in the transverse and it's and it's pretty strong uh, but because it's this way it's really hard to insert it's built to insert into the sheath see how it's got that same blade insert looks like I always call it a tongue and it's got a little it also has that same little hook at the top that allows you to kind of drive it into place and also gives you something to tie to. So if you're going to try to insert this in the mouth, one you've got you also have these additional arms that are for sagittal uh, issues because you can take these arms and bend them to engage say a lateral incisor or a central incisor that is coming in way lingual and you want to use like a finger spring to have this push against it you can bend these and change their size and shape and the the um, tools that I had you look at to do that with is one is a hollow chop you can come in with a hollow chop and change the angulation of these quite a bit like that you could also use a three prong plier to make more acute bends like that 
you had to work around uh, an incisor, you could use this as as necessary to get around incisors. But whenever I insert this, if I'm going to try to place this in the mouth, I always compress it and put quarter inch rubber bands around it and then I go ahead and I compress the appliance and I put all three of them on like this I'm going to take it back over this side now it gives me some control because it stays compressed and after I get it in place and I've got it all done, I'll just cut those and then they'll uh, it'll go to work. It'll activate. So let's just try it in. Again, you have to make sure that that little tab is up so the appliance is lower. The appliance basically lies gingival to the sheath and it's going to slip in to the sheath just like that and then We'll get a wine guard. Insert one side. Let me change the angle on that so you guys can see better. Then I'll come over and try to get the other side. Just like that. Then you can use that little knob and the back of your sheath and you can compress it like that and that set, seats it better then you can use there's a little there's a little indentation in the tube right there where you can also catch an edge and do some more and see it's more if you need to I think we may have it all the way in yeah I think that's seated all the way because there's the end of the tongue there there's the end of the tongue there but look at where our arms are so we need to make adjustments in the arms now you may be adept enough to make these adjustments in the mouth and if you are fantastic um, we, it's certainly easy to do on the type of it would not be as easy to do this in the mouth I'm using a hollow chop here and just change that just that just like that and you could use any any tool in your bag. Take this is just a wine guard or a three prong. Here's a three prong. But normally I would not be doing this in the mouth. I would make marks on these arms where necessary, and then I would take it. Uh, and, and bend it outside the mouth but I I have had these inserted in the mouth and made adjustments in these arms you can also cut these arms off you can cut them off all the way back in this area okay so once we've got it fully inserted then the next step is to tie it in so the first thing I'll do is I'll take a light a, a ligature pin ligature cutter and I'm going to cut these these elastics like that now it's active now this is trying to spread apart and you can just imagine if this was a utility arch wire out here and this was mixed dentition and you only had two incisors in and two of them were blocked out you might have these springs pushing on those two lateral incisors and you're pushing this apart trying to make more arch arch room more arch length so that there'll be a place for those teeth to go. So finally we tie it in. Now there's two ways to tie these in. You can tie it in with a steel ligature. Remember that the sheaths also have a little hook. See that little hook under there? I don't know if we can get in tight enough to see it or not. See right there there's a little hook sticking out. And let me hold this and see if I can catch that. That is a tight shot right there. Sorry. That's one way to tie it in with a steel. 
ligature. And that's not going to go anywhere. The other way is to use a glide pod. Let me go ahead and clip this and tuck it real quick. Tuck that out of the way. Now let's get a let's get a glide tie. So you can catch that hook, that little knob that they give you, and then if I try trying to pull my molar out here. And just stretch that over that tongue. Like that. And that'll hold it in. Either one of those ways is perfectly fine. Now, this appliance has the ability to increase arch length by expanding transversely. These arms give you finger springs that you could push on teeth that are lingually inclined or blocked out. Uh, you can also cut them off shorter and just have them also uh, applying pressure to a specific tooth on the uh, in, in lateral uh, areas. Or you may just cut them off completely. They used to make this appliance, the first Transforce appliance didn't even have these arms. They were added later. So uh, you can always cut them off right back here right where they're, they are welded on and not even have the arms and then you're just just using this. If it's not as stable as you want it to be you could cut these arms bend one up over a, a primary molar and then tack it down to the molar with a composite um, and stabilize the appliance that way. My biggest complaint on this, compli this appliance what you have to watch out for is that it tends to slip down toward the uh, gingival and can embed in the soft tissue and sometimes it'll embed enough in the soft tissue that I actually have to go in and do a little laser work to get it out of there. Um, but the finally the only th other thing you need to know about this is that if you want to use it as a holding arch after you've expanded and you want to deactivate the appliance you can go in and crimp this tube with any instrument maybe a ribbon arch plier or a wine guard whatever Put a hard crimp in that and that deactivates it because it can no longer uh, the piston can no longer work and that concludes the uh, the exercise uh, of the transforce appliance